San Antonio. This is Rob for the Metalworks tonight. We're here hanging out at Rob's Metalworks headquarters only to bring you the finest and best from right here in the Lone Star State. Brings me great pleasure to welcome back to the program Mr. Larry Berrigan and Robert Trevino, guitarist for the band Hellstar. How are you gentlemen doing this evening? Doing good tonight so far. Uh, got some liquid refreshments going on. And uh, we're, we're happy to be here in this luxurious Rob's Metalworks vault. How are you doing, Robert? Great to see you again. Yeah. Same here. Merry Christmas. All that good stuff. Uh, Larry, why don't we go ahead and get started by just sharing with the people out there um, from that time period when you were already writing just, I think at that time, just a few songs for King of Hell about how the writing process kind of evolved. I know that uh, maybe uh, there were some things that um, you had to go back to, maybe new things you implemented. Now, um, as Hellstar uh, came back together and wrote a new body of material after so many years. So, uh, talk a little bit about that process and, and things that happened with that. Well, at first it was pretty much, um, you know, we are shopping for label and then uh, soon thereafter, you know, we, we got signed and the label thought, uh, instead of doing a whole new album, let's do kind of a, a greatest hits and uh, kind of a reintroduction of the band into the scene and uh, we couldn't really get all the labels to cooperate and like give us the songs so we said well you know you know we're gonna we're gonna do we'll do them over we'll just record them over and we did sins of the past and and we added the two songs that were you know they're basically demos uh, for for king of hell it seemed like almost everyone that reviewed it was like, okay, I'm going to fast forward to the two new songs. And, you know, that's pretty much why from then it was like, all right, everybody seems to be wanting new material. I, I think uh, true Hellstar fans were really uh, happy with that release. And now uh, let's talk about uh, what we're really here to talk about, and that is uh, the new one, uh, King of Hell is here, uh, Terrain uh, in Texas. Uh, First of all, let me say that uh, this, and you guys know this, but this record uh, has been highly acclaimed around the world in the metal community. Larry, how would you rank King of Hell versus all of the great work that you've done in the past? And, or how do you, maybe if you don't want to rank it, how would you compare it? What makes King of Hell so badass? I mean, it's just the heaviest one we've done, you know. it's um, uh, A lot of people, they go back to that, that they either talk about remnants where they talk about Nosferatu, and uh, Rob said this before too, it's like almost everyone has like their favorite one, like, oh man, after Burning Star, you lost me, or something like that. Uh, but the two albums that kind of stick out the most are always Nosferatu and, uh, and Remnant. Uh, Rob, um, I know personally that uh, you also had a huge impact in this record um, as far as arrangements and solo work. I mean, great solo work on this record. Talk a little bit ab about that, um, you know, after having been away uh, from the band for quite some time, uh, coming back um, and kind of also kind of, you know, kind of showing the world that, you know what, I still got my chops and, you know, I'm, I'm probably better than ever. Even though you had not actively been in music, involved in music uh, for these past years, talk, so, so talk a little bit about that and, and, and ultimately, uh, the things that you wrote for King of Hell. Um, as for the solos and what you're saying, you know, I really appreciate that because I think for me, um, this album represents, uh, you know, what what I was never able to to deliver after Remnants. You know, Remnants, I had just turned 18 years old when I recorded that album. So, you know, I mean, hopefully I've gotten better since then. You know, <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm, you know, better than I was at maybe 24, 25 years old. But as you know, but I think I play with a lot more feel and soul now, and choose my notes better. And and I think Larry, for that matter, too. You know, he's gotten back to, you know, you know, he's very technical and very clean player. You know, I mean, I, you know, grew up watching the guy. You know. Well, uh, you know, uh, King of Hell uh, has been out uh, this past year, and it was released uh, in Europe through AFM uh, Records. Um, but now, um, I think many Hellstar fans are excited to know that the record will be released here in the U.S. Uh, talk a little bit about the deal with Locomotive. Um, how did that kind of come about? And um, obviously, that's something that uh, 
we're all pretty excited about. Um, yeah, it'll be released uh, January 13th, I believe, here in the States uh, through Locomotive USA. Um, actually, it's part of the uh, the arrangement with AFM. They have an arrangement, and, and when we when we signed with AFM, we knew it was a worldwide you know deal, and. Um, and it just made it that much. We could have went the route of saying, no, we want to shop ourselves, you know, here and here and here. But um, we just let them, you know, universal ha universally handle it. And, and so that's their relationship they have uh, for here in the States. So. Now, now, the version that I have here in my hands uh, has a total of 12 tracks, three of which are bonus tracks. Um, so... Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the American release. Will it have these bonus tracks? Will there be any difference uh, between uh, the European release and the American release? Yeah, the, the, only the European release has the three bonus tracks, and the uh, American re release will only have what is the album up to uh, the Garden of Temptation, which is the, the nine songs. Um, that's just a deal that they have, man. They want bonus tracks, and they want them for themselves, you know. Okay, guys, so uh, why don't we take... Um, the next uh, few moments to talk a little bit about road work. I know that you guys have already done stuff in Europe this past year, um, are doing select shows um, uh, across uh, the region, uh, and I also have heard that there are some things coming up uh, for uh, 09 as well. So, uh, Rob, share a little bit about uh, what, what you guys um, have uh, planned uh, for, for this coming year. We're going to kick off the king of hell tour um mid-january um we're going to do about five dates here in the states um doing a couple here in texas and then we're going to fly out to the uh, west coast and do some uh do hollywood uh san marcos which is san diego basically um right in there and then uh, vegas for the first time All right, so uh, that should be cool, and it's actually on Super Bowl weekend. Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> um, also, uh, and there's a couple some things in the works for uh, for Europe as well uh, next year, and um, the details are still being worked out. Uh, but one thing that has been um, solidified or confirmed is the Headbangers Open Air. Um, it's, I forget the, the name of the town, but it's in Germany. Uh, it's a three-day festival, and it's going to be a killer. Before I let you guys go, there's a couple of other things I want to chat about. One is um, uh, the video that uh, people who uh, watch this episode uh, tonight will see for the first time. I was uh, fortunate enough to catch a draft of the video tonight. Very killer piece of work. I'm excited that Hellstar will officially have a video. Is this the first Hellstar video ever? This is the first official, like, you know, concept yeah. video that we have ever done. Uh, you know, after, you know, the... I guess seven studio albums. This is, this is the first one, and uh, it, it took a lot of uh, finagling to get it done. But uh, I'm happy, man. You know, it's it's for the uh, song "Pain Will Be Thy Name," and um, it's a uh, kind of a concept. Uh, we went in, we shot it in one day. We uh, we have a kind of a, a torture room kind of set up, and uh, I think it came out pretty killer so far. Talk a little bit about the video, Rob. What can people expect uh, when they see the video? Pain. <laughs> um, any last words, guys? Anything I missed? Anything you want to share with uh, people in San Antonio who will see this interview uh, here very soon or people later on around the world who will see it on YouTube? Um, thanks for supporting the band and uh, go out and, and, and buy the album, download the album. I know a lot of you guys stole it. That's cool, man. I don't care. I mean... You know, come out and see us play, and, and uh, you know, hey, <laughs> after the show, you know, we walk around, we, we're very accessible to the fans, and, you know, have a beer with us, or Chan, and, you know, let's uh, let's have a good year. Uh, yeah, I just want to reiterate, you know, thanks for all the support for all, you know, all these years, um, and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get out to as many of you as we can uh, to, for this, and, um, and in the future, we... We don't want to stop now, put it that way. Well, I thank you, gentlemen, for coming up here to uh, Rob's Muddle Works headquarters to spend an evening with myself and, and the crew and for giving us all the information on uh, a great uh, work, King of Hell. We look forward to continuing uh, to support it uh, in 2009 and beyond. Remember, San Antonio, the new one is out there already. By the time you see this, it will be out. 
go out there, pick it up. It's called King of Hell. You saw Larry Berrigan and Rob Trevino only right here on Rob's Metalworks.